I'm Joan Firkins, the moderator for this session. How could you be of service beyond the club level? So thanks everyone for attending today. And now I'd like to introduce District Governor nominee Lorna Curtis, who will introduce our speakers. The session today, the purpose of this session is to increase your knowledge about the district, to develop awareness, to encourage you to volunteer at the district level, and at the end, we're hoping we have some time so we can respond to any questions that you may have. The big picture of Rotary, it's a global network. It's people of action who see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. Now to tell you a little bit about our district, I would like to welcome immediate past district governor, Craig Gillis. Well, thank you so much, District Governor nominee Lorna. It is a delight to work with you and welcome everyone and thank you for taking part in this session and for contemplating a leadership future in District 5020. I'm actually only 27 years old, but uh, following a year as District Governor, some would say I look a little bit older than that. But to be honest, last year was a memorable year filled with getting to know inspiring Rotarians and learning so much about this impressive district and the larger world of Rotary. Lorna mentioned Rotary's vision statement. It speaks to why you might be in this session and it speaks to the why of leadership not the club being so important. So why would you consider taking on a district leadership role? Well, I believe that most of us join Rotary because we want to provide service to our communities and to our larger world. And we do expect to leave an imprint to see change. What we may not anticipate is the change that occurs within ourselves. And that has led me to recognize that when people ask us to join the family of Rotary, it's so important for them to know they will develop skills, knowledge, and connections to so many other Rotarians and community members who otherwise would not become part of our lives. When we look at the map of our district, it becomes apparent that it's an international district with clubs in Canada and the US. And if you begin at the northern tip of Vancouver Island, the Rotary Club of Port Hardy, you would travel another 500 kilometers south to reach R Rotary Clubs in Victoria, a total of 37 Rotary Clubs. And once you traverse the two hour ferry ride to Port Angeles, our most Northern Washington State Club. It takes another 250 miles and quite a bit of traffic to reach the Rotary Club of Woodland in the south, a total of another 55 Rotary Clubs. You see, when you serve the district, you have an opportunity to meet many remarkable Rotarians, much like those involved in today's session. People who are willing to share time and talent in the service of others people of action with a true Rotary heart. Did you know that there are 530 Rotary districts in the world and that District 5020 is the largest in North America and about 20th in the world? 92 clubs of the world's over 35,000 clubs are in our district and we number about 4,600 Rotarians. The greatest challenge of every district is at the end of the Rotary year when we tend to lose about three to 5% of our membership. We are all working hard during these COVID-19 times to ensure we continue to engage and retain our members. And that is why we're doing things differently to keep our sense of connectedness. Now District 5020 is actually a registered corporation and due to the size of the district, we're divided into 17 different areas, seven on Vancouver Island and 10 in Washington. And each of these areas has an assistant governor whose chief function is to be a resource and an advocate for the clubs in his or her area. DG Mo and DGE Greg will tell you more about these roles shortly. As a member of district leadership, your primary role is to serve and to support clubs. So just how do we communicate in such a vast international district? It's our district council that keeps its finger on the pulse of District 5020. 
And during these COVID times, we've all learned a great deal as we've been thrust into a whole new set of communication skills. So who sits on a district council? Well, today you are meeting four of the five members of what we call our district governor line, our DG line. You've met DGN Lorna, you know DGE Greg, our elect, and of course, district governor Mo. We are all part of the district governor line. District Governor Designate Dale Roberts is moderating a foundation session as we speak. Once selected, the district governor is involved in a training program with other members of the district governor line and others with similar roles in some of our partner zones. The district governor line has regular online meetings, actually quite a few of them recently, to keep us informed of current achievements, and needs and to help coordinate events such as DTVZ and do a little problem solving from time to time. As members of a corporation, we meet as a district council three times a year, generally in September, face to face, early February virtually, and then often the day before our district conference in May, again face to face. This meeting brings together the DG line, the 17 assistant governors, many of our committee chairs, as well as the treasurer and secretary. And actually we operate much like the board of a Rotary Club, setting goals, working collaboratively to achieve them and learning how to celebrate club successes. So I leave you with one thought. Don't wait to be asked to serve at the district level. I was fortunate that past district governor Norm, Norm Watts from Qualicum tapped me on the shoulder years ago he said, would you like to be a trainer for district training conference? And then asked me if I would serve as chair. And here's the thing, when you give, you gain. You meet inspiring Rotarians. You learn that we all do Rotary, perhaps differently, but with the same end in mind. Explore our remarkable district directory to find out more about the committees that exist or read the role descriptions on our website or spend some time with Caleb Sommerfeld's amazing UD5020 magazine and find that just right district committee to work with to feed your rotary passion. It is a journey that will teach you so much about yourself and others and your rotary heart will beat very proudly. Thank you very much. Thank you, past District Governor Craig. A great way for you to find out more about the district is to ask Craig questions. And now that he's going to be a past District Governor, he'll have lots of time on his hands. So feel free to contact him. Next, I'm going to welcome District Governor Mo Fitzroberts, and she's going to tell us about the roles at the district level. Thank you, District Governor nominee Lorna. It's a pleasure to be here with everyone today. You know what I really appreciate, immediate past District Governor Craig, explaining how vast this district is, not only in size, but also in the number of Rotarians who form 5020. Each district in the world has one officer of Rotary International. That officer or legal representative of Rotary International is your District Governor. Now for a small district that might only have 40 clubs and let's say 1500 Rotarians, the role of district governor is a bit easier than ours. But as an officer for Rotary, I have 92 clubs and over 4,600 Rotarians to be in contact with. As you can imagine, there is no way I could stay in touch with 92 clubs at once. That is why the role of assistant governor was created. The 17 assistant governors are the area leaders that keep the district connected with your district governor. They accomplish what a district governor simply cannot. They in stay in contact with each club in a meaningful way. They're the go-to person for clubs. Assistant governors are most commonly members of the clubs in the area they represent. They not only know the clubs, but they also know the types of events you hold. They know how you fundraise and they're aware of the needs of your community. I've been incredibly grateful for what they do. In this past year, these assistant governors have reached out to me whenever they thought I'd be able to offer assistance to them in their role of helping clubs. Together, we brainstormed on ideas and solutions. 
we reached out to the district committees. Those committee chairs are our reference point when we need specific advice. The assistant governors are the conduit between the clubs and the district. Their entire purpose is to do whatever they can to help make the clubs in their areas become stronger. District Governor-elect Greg is going to go into detail later about their role, but I have to tell you, I simply couldn't have managed this year without our 17 assistant governors. District committees probably match the board or executive of your individual clubs. They were set up in our district to be the support network to clubs, again, to help clubs become stronger. Just like reaching out to each area for an assistant governor, the district counts on the interests of Rotarians to form these district committees. When you have a special interest or talent that you'd like to share with more Rotarians, then the district is a great place to go as we're always looking for help on these committees. You'll see advertisements that go out for many roles in the summer months. We like to bring in the leaders early so they can begin to mentor with the current committee chair. Let me just give you an example. Let's talk about foundation. The chair of this committee is the only one other than the governor that must be approved by Rotary International. In most recent times, this role has been a Rotarian who also served as a district governor. When it was my responsibility to select a candidate, I decided to go another route. Not every capable, knowledgeable Rotarian puts their name forward to become district governor, although they should, you know, because it's really the best job available in Rotary. But what I did was I looked at the past performance of individuals in Rotary. I shared my findings with the entire governance line as I needed their support before I could approach anyone. They agreed that my selection of Howard Seagal's was one that they would readily approve. I was then able to approach Rotary International and they confirmed it. So as you can see, we're open to change. We're not so steeped in tradition that we would bypass a qualified person to take on a district role. Hey, I'm living proof of this ability to change. Past District Governor Joan Perkins took a chance on me as the district membership chair. I had a passion and a plan. So even though I'd never been a club president, she enlisted my help as the district membership chair. I have to tell you about the worst kept secret. It's our district website. The secret is we have one. Every year on the district website, we post the chairs of every committee and the Rotarians who put their name forward to be members of these committees. It seems most Rotarians in our district do not realize they have this wealth of help. Just an email or a phone call away. The connection goes both ways. Rotarians can reach out to these committees for help, but Rotarians can also become part of these teams to be a source of that help. When you see the emails come out to fill a district leadership role, I strongly encourage you to consider this opportunity. Let me just make up an example. For example, here we go. If you see an email from District Governor nominee Lorna this summer for, let's say, the chair of the training committee, take the time to read through it. Look at the website for the job description and look at the district directory to see who's currently on the committee. This is a district role that may not have a corresponding position in your club. Some members shy away from being district trainer because they feel you must be in the teaching profession to be considered. In reality, the district trainer is the person who plans and manages the training rather than doing the actual teaching. For example, the trainer prepares the workshops for the new assistant governors, but calls on the expertise of the membership chair and the finance committee to ensure the material being offered is current and relevant. They work with the district governor and the district governor elect to select training leaders for the president elect training seminar every February in Seattle. They attend training seminars as well, so they can share ideas with other district trainers. If DGN Lorna needed to fill this chair position, she would have to advertise in the summer of 2020. This time would allow that person to be mentored by the current chair for an entire year. They would need that year so they could be ready to begin the trainer in as trainer in July of 2021. We need committee members. I have to say I'm really impressed with our district because we do advertise when roles become vacant at the district council. Most districts leave it to the district governor to go out and fill the positions by asking Rotarians. Considering we have over 4,600 Rotarians in our district, it simply wouldn't be possible for me to gauge who would be the best person to contact. By advertising, we give all Rotarians in our district the opportunity to become involved, to gain the experience and to share their leadership skills. If you have an interest in a district committee, I encourage you to get involved now. The role of the chair for that committee may not be coming up right away, but there's always room for committee members. It's a great opportunity to find out more about the committee 
to see areas that could expand and improve and hopefully discover that you would like to let your name stand the next time a vacancy for chair comes up. There are also subcommittees within a district committee. For example, in the, men in the membership committee, there is a new club champion. The Rotarian who fills this role would focus on the tools to help a new club get started, from the basics of attracting potential members to getting the club registered with Rotary International. They may work with an existing club to help them start a, a satellite or a brand new club. The entire focus of this role is on new club development. There are so many district committees who need talented individuals. The chairs of the committees often rely on Rotarians they know to fill those roles. They may approach the assistant governors for help to find someone, but the absolute best way to fill these roles would be to have interested Rotarians step forward. If you have an interest, please go to the district website and find out who you need to contact. Follow up with a resume, let them know you're serious. I have to tell you, the saddest thing for a district governor to discover is to find out there are district committees that are a team of one. When you have a group of people working together on a com committee, there is an incredible, incredible opportunity to make the roles more interesting, to share ways to do things differently, to encourage and grow because of the variety of talents and experience Rotarians bring to a team. I'd like to wrap up by talking about the things that could be. District 5020 is proactive. We're open to change. We want to be relevant to the Rotarians and clubs. We can't spend our time talking about what we've done. We need to focus on what we can do. So when I asked Caleb Sommerfeld if he would be the district bulletin editor, he came back to me with, hey, DG Mo, how about a district magazine instead? I instantly told him, yes, let's do it. Now we're the envy of so many districts around the world. They all want a district magazine. Things have to move forward. We don't want Rotary to get left behind. We need to be seen as a service organization that matters. There are district committees that are being formed or have been created that are not even listed on the screen you're viewing. Take the Rotary uh, Learning Institute. This is training that can come to your area that covers all the basics of Rotary. It's a wonderful learning tool for new board mem members. Starting in July 1st, it will be led by Immediate Past District Governor Craig. You can join this committee as a member by just contact contacting Craig. We're also working on forming a committee to offer conflict resolution and another for disaster response. If you want to be part of the forming of these new committees, we really need to hear from you. Contact me. Contact your assistant governor. Let's make the changes that matter to you. Every single one of these committees exists because of Rotarians from clubs volunteering to join them and volunteering to lead them. Volunteers do not necessarily have the time. They just have the heart. You make the time because you believe in service above self. You're improving your community and the world by the time you give. I encourage you to become involved in the district. I encourage you to become a district governor. Call me and we can talk. Thank you, District Governor Mo. Now feel free to ask Mo questions. And did you know she is your Rotary International representative? Now I would like to introduce District Governor-elect Greg Korn, and he will talk to you about the how to get involved. Well, good morning. Rotary clubs are truly the heart and soul of Rotary. They operate in almost every community in our countries, and sometimes there are several Rotary clubs in a community. Although they operate under a basic set of rules called bylaws, they have a great deal of autonomy and freedom to operate as they see fit. But they are not left alone with everyone hoping for the best. Rotary clubs are part of the district in which they reside. And the main purpose of the district is truly to serve the clubs. This means that we have a tremendous leadership opportunities beyond the club level. And we operate the district, as Mo said, with a council of about 30 Rotarians. So go to rotary5020.org. That's our district website, rotary5020.org. There's a wealth of information there, but it's kind of like looking for Waldo. Keep looking, you will find it. Or contact your assistant governor, or please call me. Get started out on a committee that interests you, and later you can advance to the chair position. Find something that you are passionate about like membership, foundation, 
or youth exchange. Call the chair of any committee and discuss it with them further. District 5020 offers some great training opportunities, as does the Rotary Learning Center on the Rotary International website, which is rotary.org. Learning modules on everything Rotary. You can pause them and finish later at any time. And it's amazing. It will remember exactly where you left off. So you can pick up seamlessly. Now, assistant governors. If you have been the president of your club, you have a unique opportunity to apply for one of the best jobs in Rotary. So far in my Rotary career, I've had the most fun being assistant governor. You get to assist with president-elect training, both prior to and at PETS. You meet with club presidents on a regular basis. You get to know the club members in the four or five or six clubs that you're assistant governor of. And you assist with club reports and you suggest ways to address problems and find solutions. What are the qualifications for assistant governor? Well, you have to be, have been in our district for at least three years, have served a full term as club president, and be willing and able to accept the responsibilities of assistant governor. And the job description is on the Rotary 502 organization website. Now, when you're assistant governor, you're gonna travel a little bit, I hope. You have reasonable expense reimbursement for your expensive. You have a district expense account that takes care of your mileage and if you're away from overnight on district business, also your hotels and meals. You're also reimbursed for assistant governor training. You're reimbursed for going to pets and district training and conference trips and the three annual district council meetings that you're expected to attend. Training opportunities for potential district leaders. And there are lots of district training seminars that we're putting on. District training and conference occurs each May. Emerging leader training at the Zone Institute is uh, available each year in November. And this year we're planning on having it in San Diego. And right now it looks like that will be on. District team training seminars for assistant governors and committee chairs are available. And then once again, the Rotary Learning Center on the Rotary International website, rotary.org. Then there's Rotary publications and manuals. You can download them all from Rotary website. And Rotary is putting on a lot of Rotary webinars. We feel that knowledge of the individual members is the best way that we can continue our success. And then we have Rotary conventions around the world at the international level. Unfortunately, the one this year in Honolulu had to be canceled. Uh, hopefully I'll be at the convention next year in Taipei. Rotary staff, back in Evanston, there are people in Rotary um, on the staff called CDS. And that title means Club and District Service. And they are truly here to help you. And we've got a very, very good young man named Nick Taylor. And he spends a lot of his time on our district and a couple others giving very, very good personal advice and attention. And we all have access to Nick Taylor. Now, District Governor, qualifications. Well, to be a District Governor, you must have been a Rotarian for a minimum of seven years at the time you take office. You must be a past president of a Rotary Club and a member in good standing of a functioning club. You must be nominated for the inter interview by your Rotary Club. And the selection takes place in October of each year, two years and eight months ahead of taking office. Can you believe that? They throw two years and eight months of training at you. They don't want you to screw it up too badly. What does a governor do? Well, in all of Rotary, everything is on the same calendar year, July 1st to June 30th. And the governor has a one-year term in office. 
And as Mo said, you are the only officer of Rotary International in the district. The responsibility truly uh, is on you to have a successful year. Um, you get to provide leadership, inspiration, and guidance to Rotary clubs throughout the district under the general supervision of Rotary International Board of Directors. And the Rotary International District Governor Manual is a great reference. It's on the website, downloadable for everybody to see. You can find a detailed job description on the district website. The governor is expected to visit each club or group of clubs sometime during the year. And in the past, the governor visits have generally wrapped up around the end of November or early December. But we're gonna have a little different situation this year. Thanks to Zoom, I am able to attend eight to 10 Rotary Club meetings every single week. And, and for me, the benefit is I'm getting to know the presidents, presidents elect and all the members very, very personally. And I suspect that in the past, when a governor walked into a club, there was about a 75% chance that they were strangers. Not going to be that way this year. With Zoom, I'm going to know the club members and hopefully they'll know me. I'll meet with the members and the board of each club personally to find out what's going to go on. And I hope to be on the road as quickly as safely possible. Thank you. Thank you, District Governor Luck Greg. Now, feel free to bombard him with questions. He's even given us uh, the authority to put his phone number up here. So 253-228-0134. Remember that number. So help us find you. If you are interested in being a district, um, uh, serving on a district committee, let us know. If you know someone who is, let us know. If you want to start a new committee in the district, let us know. We're here for you. Why would you want to get involved at the district level? Well, it, help, it furthers your leadership skills. You're going to meet new people, new friends. You're going to learn more about Rotary. There's lots of reasons why to get involved. It is very, very rewarding. And so a sample of some of the uh, job opportunities that will be advertised this summer and these are for uh, positions that will start in 2021-22, uh, the year I will be district governor. But we get, as it was said earlier, these people are appointed a year in advance, so they have time to have to receive training and also shadow, shadow the current person in the position. So we will be looking for assistant governors for area 4, 7, 10, 12, 13, and 16. So if you are interested in those positions, uh, have a look at the uh, job description on the website and uh, oops, send in a resume. We'll be very interested to hear from you. And of course, you will hear about the, the see the advertising for the district governor 2023-24 it will be sent out this fall. So that concludes our formal presentation today. Now over to you folks to ask uh, any questions. And if you could go in the participant and raise your hand and then Joan Ferkins will uh, allow you to uh, unmute you or tell you to unmute and you can ask your question. Thank you. Okay, we have a question from Bill. Thank you. It's not, not so much a question as a comment to those that are listening. Um, the Y scale uh, slide that was showing is uh, it's a great opportunity to meet people. I'm assistant or governor in uh, 13, and I have so enjoyed it. I've learned so much about Rotary. I've met awesome people. I've made connections that I never would have made if I had just stayed as a Rotarian within a club. So I encourage anybody who is interested to be in an assistant governor role to do it. I mean, you're working with some awesome people. Your district governors get back to you and you have questions. And thank you so much for the opportunity. I look forward to another year and being rehired by Greg, district governor like Greg. And I'm also uh, starting to look for potential people that might be interested in taking this position on. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, 
Lorna, someone would like um, Greg's phone number again, please, when you can find it. And I'll go to, I've got a raise hand from Debbie. I'm muted. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh. Great. So I'm from the Vancouver Island group. Now we're, you know, getting the message that we're going to be under restrictions of travel and uh, groups no more than 50 for a long time. So I just wondered if there's sort of any strategy around how the district will sort of operate uh, over a longer term kind of COVID restrictions. It is a really good question. And you know, it's the same question that Rotary International has been asking as well. And so what they're doing is they're putting together a task force and they have asked Rotarians if they would like to be on that committee. And so we're going to do the exact same thing in our district. We want to have a task force of Rotarians that form a new district committee so that we can look at that and come up with ideas and suggestions that we can share. We actually, at the last district, uh, district council meeting in April, talked about how much we'd like to have a section of our district website devoted just to COVID-19. So you've got a go-to place. And like everything else, Things take time, but if you are at all interested in this and would like to be part of it, we'd certainly love to have you step forward and join us. There are obviously going to be talented people out there, and we'd really like to enlist Rotarians that have an interest and have an understanding and, and join us and make sure we do this well. Well, this, this uh, current situation we're in started eight or so weeks ago, and the clubs very, very quickly moved into electronic meetings. And I have just seen a world of difference in the quality of meetings over the last eight or nine weeks. And they're getting a lot more streamlined, a lot more professional. At first, a few of the older Rotarians were dragged in kicking and screaming. Um, I've got a 94 year old member in my club who can log in to Zoom all by himself now and he's loving it. Uh, we're also seeing the, the people that go south for the winter and spend their winters in Florida and Arizona and uh, California, they're zooming into the club meetings. And in many cases, club attendance is up. So we just have to be adaptable to the change and make the most of it. And I think we will. Okay, we have a question from Michelle Parkin. Hi everybody, thanks so much for the presentations today. Really informative from my perspective. My question is whether or not the district has ever given consideration to a district-wide world community service um, committee. I am just going to answer that because if you've got a district governor on the line, we just cannot be quiet. So uh, basically with, uh, with that, we do have a world community service individual as a committee chair on the district council, that's Judy Byron, and she does travel. She's gone to many clubs and given presentations. And so that's that best kept secret I was talking about, our district website. There are so many things that people just, we can't get the word out to everybody as much as we would like to. So if you look through that uh, website, you will see that that chair does exist and Judy Byron is more than happy to, to connect with you in some manner so that you can find out more about that international service. Thanks, Maureen. Uh, we have a question from Past District Governor Craig. Actually, not a, a question, uh, Past District Governor Joan, but just a, a <laughs> comment on COVID. You know, we seem to have get, been given a Rotary International gift in a theme, opening opportunities. And I sense that much of what we do is going to be left with, a, in many ways, a really positive impact with our ability to communicate and I just wanted to mention to those who are considering becoming presidents that in the following year, we just finished two fairly lengthy uh, meetings yesterday around our president-elect training. And we're looking at the president-elect training in a very different way. There are going to be core courses that are going to be on webinar to give more time to spend at training, ultimately teaching people how to facilitate so that both the uh, assistant governors and their presidents are going to have this opportunity to develop a set of skills through facilitation. And I think as we enter into this area, we see a lot of opportunities and probably we won't go back to Rotary just as it always was, but we will take the best 
from both of our experiences and become the stronger, better, and more improved brand of Rotary than we've ever been. Thank you, Craig. At the moment, uh, we don't have any raised hands. No. Lorna? Yes, Lorna? Uh, my hand is raised, but I can't raise it because I'm the host. But Oh, yeah. Some people would believe that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I have somebody, uh, Doug has messaged me privately, uh, and I believe that probably uh, DG Mo or DG Greg could answer this. Could you or the leadership speak to the criteria and information needed, who, what, and how to create or charter a new district committee? Actually, what we do is the concept where you would start by taking it to your assistant governor, or you can bring it directly to council, but you're going to have a better method by going to your assistant governor and presenting it to them because then they can bring it to council. And then we as a, a council would look at it and set up the criteria. We have a we have a policy and procedure manual, which is also on that uh, district website we have been referring to all morning. But what we do is when we set up a committee, we determine if it's a committee that will be in association with the council or have a chair that sits regularly on the council. I alluded earlier to our World Community Service Chair, Judy Byron. That is a chair that when she has something to report, she comes to council, otherwise she's not expected to be at every council meeting. So when we set up a committee, we determine how that committee best is best suited to serving the district, but we are very, very open to how that would happen. But the very first step is to bring it to the to your assistant governor, it comes to council, we have the policy and, and resolutions committee look at it, and we come up with the, the proper procedure for it. Somebody as talented as district governor nominee Lorna would help come up with job descriptions for it. It doesn't happen overnight, but you know, if we have enough people working on it, we can make things happen readily now, far easier than when everybody was out socializing. Now we're at home at our computers doing that kind of thing. So very good question. I think every good idea in Rotary starts with an individual person. And we're in an organization that listens. We don't always act on every suggestion, but if it's a good one and it's got merit, it's got wheels and traction, it can happen. Everything in Rotary starts with the individual and goes from there. So if you got a great idea for a new committee, bring it on, let's hear it. We have a raised hand from Len. Thanks. I just wanted to ask is, uh, what do, how are we advancing the District 5030 uh, database, uh, business database uh, through District 5020? So Mark Hoppen is the vocational chair for our district, and he is working on that. We are going to be, uh, it's very exciting. So this is, you can access it right now. And it's, we are upgrading it. In fact, other districts around are also looking at becoming part of it. As a Rotarian, it costs you nothing to join it. You are then able to advertise your business as a Rotarian. And we want to get this message out. We want more people using it. They're looking at changing the name of it so it's more of a North American uh, Rotary business site. But yes, if you are in business, let's get you up on that. So Mark Hoffman, vocational chair, District Council, District 5020 website, go there, talk to him. He's very interested in talking to you. He's a catalyst for getting this out there this year. And I'm really happy. Thanks, Lynn, for bringing that up. Are there plans, this is from Megan. Are there plans to rethink or pivot how friendship exchanges are conducted with other districts? That's a tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a, a really strong friendship leader with uh, friendship exchange leader with Kevin Hilger, past district governor from another district. I don't know what's going to happen because it's a little bit like being uh, youth exchange students. We don't know where tomorrow will be and how we will make those exchanges happen and when we can even do that. We have somebody on the Zoom meeting this morning. Hi, Kyle Fox. <laughs> He's one of our recipients of uh, an international scholarship, an ambassadorial scholarship. He probably isn't even sure if he's going to have a school to attend. So right now with COVID-19, I really hope that just like the District Youth Exchange Committee is meeting, that 
Kevin and his team are looking at what we can do differently. I can't speak for it, but Kevin Hilgers is also on the District 5020 website, and you can contact him. He'd, be, he'd probably be the guy for go-to solutions. We have a question from Curtis. Hi, Curtis. Um, is there an ideal path to take to have the best background before applying to be a district governor? Uh, generally, it was thought that the route to becoming a district governor was be an assistant governor first. But I'd like to point out that both Craig Gillis and our current Governor Mo, neither of them were assistant governors. They came on and through different ways. They were in the training area. Um, they, were, they were just excellent at what they did on the council. And that was all that was required is some very good council experience. So you don't have to be an assistant governor you can you can come up and uh, join the join the ranks through a successful path another way. Thanks, Greg. Um, Natalie is asking, can you please remind me who is taking the lead on the new pandemic response committee? We are still looking for that leader, Natalie. And uh, this is one of those dangerous times when you put your hand up and ask a question like that, that the district governor gives you a phone call and says, hey, we'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I was just thinking that in the context of youth exchange and youth services, it would be great to have someone from either one of those or both committees helping out. <laughs> okay, we have a raised hand from PDG Craig. I just wanted to mention one thing because this is a leadership and actually uh, District Governor Maureen has already mentioned it, but that wonderful young man there, Kyle Fox from Campbell River is actually a great example of leadership development. You know, he was an Interact student. We sent him to Ryla when he was young. He formed the, uh, chartered the Rotaract Club of Quest University. And here he is now today, a global scholar. So that is the wonderful explanation, I think, of where leadership and opportunity and just immersing yourself in experience can take you. And we're very, very proud of him and proud to see him here today. So thanks again to everyone for attending. We certainly hope the session was informative for you.